Welcome to Hawaii, um, and I get to be the first talk. So we have the uh, slides working. Our Windows 95 expert evidently figured out the magic key. No one else remembers Windows 95, but this machine, it's a classic. So we're, we're ready to roll, I guess. That's good. And they sacrificed the virgin in the volcano already, so the drums have ended, right? We're done with that. I understand we're going to do that every morning. And every, cl every closing, too? No? Okay, just every morning. It's a great idea. Always fun. Right, so we're ready to go. Um, hey, uh, the, I noticed the thing says Elizabeth Glover. I'm not Elizabeth Glover. I am John Dunn, AWR. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Kent uh, Paparisto, uh, had other commitments. He is at the show today, so I will be giving the talk. Uh, what this is about is uh, the big picture is 5G. And specifically, we're going to be looking at antenna arrays, which are, are a critical part of 5G, and we're going to be looking at modeling those in a system simulator, our VSS system simulator. Now, uh, first of all, 5G, if you haven't heard about it, this thing is going to be amazing. Uh, it's coming out in 2020, is rollout, and uh, it slices, it dices, it raises the dead. Uh, it's going to do everything, okay? And as part of 5G, there are huge bandwidth requirements, um, et cetera. The only way you are going to get all this data wirelessly from point A to point B is to essentially deploy every trick you've got. And included in that, of course, fancy modulation schemes, et cetera. Uh, a part of it is going to be the antennas, because you just got to get the information from A to B wireless. We have to have antennas. How do we get that kind of information through the antennas? We're looking at multiple beams, massive input, massive output. We're uh, looking probably at phased array technology uh, and other technologies. So a lot of these uh, companies now, uh, we'll see a couple in this talk, are actually starting to make prototype, typically phased arrays, uh, modules uh, with power amplifiers behind them putting out multiple beams which then can be steered to try to again get this huge uh, bandwidth uh, and, and data throughput that we need for 5G to meet the specs. And I already covered this basically. Incidentally, one point on this slide, um, I just like the bug, he's kind of cute, right, antenna. Um, anyway, uh, on the left, uh, a lot of people think of, me, of MIMO, massive input, massive output, as antenna to antenna. Remember, the mass, what they're doing now is these massive input and output. The output could be going to six different receivers. So don't think it's just one phased array to another. I mean, you could have a phased array going, spreading the beams out throughout this room, actually. So it's a lot more general than just one antenna to one antenna. All right. So phased arrays are important. Obviously, if you're going to design one of these things, you have to get into the phased arrays. Um, classically, you would do the phased array itself, of course, using an electromagnetic simulator, uh, antenna software, et cetera. Once you kind of get this thing as a system engineer, if you're looking at the RF link and designing that, you really want to get the effects of the phased array and the antenna in the system level. Now, that's not quite so obvious, right? Because you're saying, well, I did the electromagnetics. I know the antenna pattern. I know the S parameters. I know the input impedances to the array. But I real, how do I deal with it at a system level? And these effects really matter. And that's what this talk is about. In a nutshell, what we do in our system simulator called VSS, uh, what you're seeing here is a, a simplified link and I'd like you to take a look at that second element and the, uh, yeah, the second element. And you'll notice it says TX phased array. That is the system model element in the system simulator that is modeling the phased array. Now, how do you model a phased array at a system level? Well, what we do 
is obviously we're, we have data tables, input tables, and you can put in the number of elements, et cetera, and all this stuff. The basic idea in its sim most simplistic form at the system level is we just use the antenna array equation. And if you're used to array equations, it's the classic, I can't even remember, what is it, n sine theta over sine n theta. And you get the beam. What are the assumptions of that? The assumptions are every element is an isotropic radiator. The elements are not coupling. You, of course, are not accounting for things like input impedances, et cetera. So in its simplest form, that's what you would use. And then you would figure out, uh, you would, you know, in the, in the element, you'd say we're at this angle, and it would figure out the power in the system simulator, and off we go. Uh, what we've done, though, is we can do better than that. And so what we do have done, and I'll show you this, we actually can put in real antenna patterns into that element, so much more realistic. We can actually couple the elements, get coupling effects with nearest neighbors and stuff like this. And if you're an antenna designer, uh, I'm sure you appreciate that that is an, an important effect. What am I doing here? I did the wrong thing. Let me do this. You can incidentally, uh, I did bring these up, and you can see here, you can see under, inside that element there's a lot more complicated stuff going on. Okay. Uh, this is showing us a little bit more details on this phased array element. I don't want to get into these a lot, but suffice it to say, uh, if we look at some of this, uh, you can actually, basically the way, you, the, the way you set up this element is a big text file. And it's kind of ugly to write text files, right? So to aid you, what this slide is about is right here, you can actually set up these measurements, it will write the text file, and then you can set up the element. That's the point of the slide. Uh, this is what I was referring to, that the uh, phased array element in the simulator actually can use real antenna patterns. Now, where would you get the real antenna pattern from an electromagnetic simulator or measured data? We have nothing against measurements. Measurements are good, right? And in this example, we've done a simple patch and you can, of course, uh, also read off the input impedance, which can go into the phased array element if you wish. Uh, you get the pattern, and then it would auto-generate the data file for the pattern, and you would put it into the element. Uh, another, uh, this is a little uh, side note. We actually have another, for you, for, for you actual antenna designers, we do have another product out there that's briefly mentioned here called Anson. It's a pretty neat little tool uh, which basically synthesizes antenna elements for you. Arrays, inverted F, horn, whatever you want. And it will pick, as a matter of fact, even the geometry type. So you may think you wanted an inverted F and it turns out that a wire antenna or something does better for your application. Uh, it's a pretty slick little tool. It's uh, one of the first in the market of actually doing antenna synthesis and helping you uh, pick what you need and meeting your spec. So this would be another example then out of this we could get the patterns of the elements. Uh, this again would be showing uh, more synthesizing. In this case it looks like a, a patch over uh, um, another uh, uh, ground and we would take that pattern and put it into the system element. Back to the system uh, element, system simulator, You've got that pattern. The pattern and the input impedances can be affected by neighboring elements. As a matter of fact, in extreme cases, if you're an antenna designer, you can even get things like scan blindness and really bad effects, right? So in an effort to get more realistic effects into the system element, you can include coupling between elements. Now, if you think of an array here, and I believe this is what, an eight by eight. If we're gonna do nearest neighbor coupling, clearly the elements in the center are gonna have more elements around them than at a corner or an edge. And so in this example, you can see we kinda have three types of elements. Elements that are essentially on the interior of the array, elements at the edge of the array, and then ele four elements at the corner. All of these, if, you, if they count nearest neighbor coupling, 
would be slightly different input impedances, patterns, things like this. So what you can actually do in the phased array element in the system simulator is tell different elements which pattern to use, which input impedance, and you can figure this out from here. So you actually then, again, can get a coupling. The coupling will change as you go across the array, and it's all included in the element. Of course, you have to set it up uh, correctly. And here would be an example uh, where the center elements, you, you would obviously get the beam coming up the middle. Uh, this is another, uh, this is not the system simulator. I quickly wanted to show you another thing that we can uh, do here in 30 seconds. This is now Microwave Office, the circuit simulator. And what's going on here, because uh, it's an important point, um, what's going on here is you have an antenna array. You can see at the top the pattern, of course, done with Axiom, an electromagnetic simulator. What you have to deal with, what makes these array problems so hard is as you scan the beam, it changes the input impedance to the elements. The elements are being driven by power amplifiers and saturation. So guess what? As you scan the beam, the, imp the load impedance to the power amplifier changes, and you have a mess, right? Because you're scanning... That changes, power amplifier performance changes. A classic example of this, which I'll show you in a minute, is typically we taper, if we again think of an array, we typically taper the power coming in and we have the most power on the center elements and a lesser power on the outside. So you would get your side lobes level, uh, lowered, for example. Well, if you taper that, the power amplifiers in the middle elements could be driven to saturation much more than the ones on the outer part of the array. And you get different performance, right? So it's a problem. So what, we, what I'm showing here is we actually have the capability as you scan the beam, and this again would be a circuit simulator, and let's say we're uh, modeling the power amps, we can actually account for the coupling between the input impedance of the antenna and the power amp automatically. So you don't have to do it manually. So as you scan, it's recalculating with harmonic balance the power amplifier performance. Let's get back to the system uh, simulator. Uh, you, of course, can have multiple beams. Uh, the Phased array element supports a variety of ways of doing this. Uh, for example, one way people will steer a beam is the so analog method. And in that method, we simply send in the RF carrier. It, we branch it out to the elements. We have an analog phase shifter at the RF frequency for each element. And we scan as we change the phase at that center frequency. Uh, the advantage of that technique is it's pretty simple. The disadvantage of that technique is that it's not that accurate, right? Because you have these analog phase shifters and there's a, it, it, you just can't steer it that accurately. The way people are kind of going now is digital beam forming, where they actually at baseband will DSP, they will actually digitally process the signals, et cetera, then up convert, and they can get a much more accurate steer on the beam. The problem with that is you've got to, at each element now, have a separate feed. So you have a much more complicated feed structure coming into each element and making sure it's all, as you up-convert, uh, you would have to do that at each element, for example. So that's your trade-off. And then, of course, as you get these big arrays, they're talking about doing hybrid methods where various areas of the array are controlled in different ways. Uh, basically, what you're seeing here, of course, is uh, if you're doing this correctly, you can have multiple beams at different angles coming out of the array. In this example here, this is VSS, the system simulator. And underneath here, over on the left, you can see it says four LTE signals. Okay? Uh, that is actually a sub-circuit, and in that sub-circuit are probably about 40 more elements, including the antenna array element I've been talking about in the system simulator. Out of this, what the uh, designer is doing is the four wires coming out, the four 
connectors, connections, are going to four different receivers. And I might add, these are LTE encoded signals. So it's a system simulator. They're looking at an LTE signal. And the four um, receivers are sitting at the main, they're sitting at those angles where the four beams are. This thing is sending out four beams from that transmitter. And then what you're seeing on the right is the designer is changing the beam angle a little bit. So now each of these receivers is not at the maximum of the beam. So of course the power goes down. And the designer in the system designer can see how accurate they need to control that beam to get acceptable power and of course data throughput. It's an LTE signal and they can see how it degrades the constellation, et cetera. Okay. Uh, 30 seconds left very quickly. Uh, this is a mock-up we did of, you might have heard, to finish up. Uh, IBM and Ericsson have actually done some prototyping, 4x4 four four array. And what we did is mock this thing up in VSS, the left picture changing power, the middle picture changing phase, the right picture changing frequency, and we can see how it affects it. So in conclusion, arrays are important for 5G. You got to do it at a system level. We now have an element that we can include arrays at a system level that includes things like coupling, et cetera, real effects in antennas, uh, and hopefully it will help. Hey, uh, we're out of time. If you want more information or demo, please drop by the booth, the National Instruments booth. We're right that way, about 100 feet. Thank you very much.